All right, so the next lesson I'm going to do is the triplet. I'm going to play two now called Old. I get asked about these old videos a lot, whether I'm going to bother remaking them with better gear now that I've got a better camera and better mics. And some of those are pretty rough. And I'm not going to remake all of them, even though on a lot of those I look and sound like crap. It is what it is. But this one I like because it's the tune that I always start out my beginner students on when I'm teaching people over Skype. And really when I'm doing in-person lessons, this is the first tune that I teach because it's a great melody. It's one that's easy to get and it's one that's got lots of room for ornaments and things you can work on. So I figured it's about time I give it another shot. So that's down by the Sally Gardens. And I played it a little bit differently the first time through from the second time. I hope you picked up on that. This is a tune that's got some options, like I mentioned in the beginning, which is one of the reasons why I like it so much. Um, a lot of folks will play it as an air, where the rhythm is a bit more freeform. Other folks play it as sort of like a slow march. So a couple of different options there. I'm gonna teach just the basic melody, go over the ornaments like I always do. And I'll kind of leave it up to you to figure out how you want to play it, whether it's more, it sounds better to your ear as an air or more regulated. Really, it's up to you. So we'll run through the basic melody, starting with the A part here. That's how I would play it at a real slow tempo, which is obviously a good thing to start with, but kind of on the beats, you know, not, not the air style, more of the marchy style. And that's the, the whole A part, and that one does repeat, and I'll play it again just so you get it. That's the whole A part there, and again, that's back to back. Now the B part is the only time you really jump up the octave. It's one kind of nice thing about it, and one of the reasons why I tend to start with this tune. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time worrying about octave and breath control. It makes it a really good beginner tune, I think. Now the B part starts on the A and then jumps up to that high D, second octave D. Now this tune is a little bit unusual, at least as far as Irish tunes go, and the B part's only played once. You basically play A, A, B, 
A. I am going to run the B part one more time again just so you get it, but in, in practice and in playing it you'd only play the B part once, at least for each time through the tune. So here we go again, the B part, just for good measure. And then again, if you're playing the tune for real, you'd go back around one more time through the A part. A lot of you guys have asked about playing tunes in other keys. This is a great one for that. If you've got a C whistle, if you've got an F whistle, a low, a low D whistle, it's a great tune for that because it is nice and slow and you've got time to kind of think through uh, how you want to play it and making sure you're getting good coverage on the holes. These are great tunes to work out on a low whistle if you just feel like playing it in a different key because, you know, woo, it's loud. Because it's kind of fun to play in a different key sometimes. But we're going to cover the ornaments just on the regular D whistle, of course. From the A part, again, basic melody is a refresher. You know, it's basically right on the bottom hand for the most part. So I tend to start off with a cut. You can slide that F sharp. So again, if you are just starting out, and this is a good tune to start out with, I would kind of work in cuts and slides. I would make that the priority. Um, work on those two ornaments, and I've got videos on all those. Uh, I can link them down below if you want to check out kind of more of the breakdown on the ornaments themselves. But as far as what to work in, that would be my priority if I were teaching this, you know, to somebody face to face. So here we go. So basically, again, cuts and slides right off the bat. You got a cut on the D and a slide on the F sharp. Cut that E. Two slides there, you're sliding the F sharp, and then sliding up to the B. I kind of do that little half holing thing, making it sort of a fake C natural, which of course there are no C naturals in this tune because it's in D, but it's just kind of a cool effect, and it's, it's my ear, it's a fairly easy one to throw in there. Where you're just kind of eh, just rolling off that top B note just a bit. And then I'm going to slide back on the B, cut that E, and then a cut on the D because you've got two Ds in a row. That's kind of a good baseline first few ornaments to work in. That being said, if you want to throw in some more things, this tune's got a lot of room for it. And if you heard it in the beginning, some of the other options, I would say, short roll. And that's kind of a bit of a trill type of thing I do in the F sharp. You go from the G to the F sharp. And it's just a quick tap, or excuse me, a quick cut. But it has that effect of sort of a double trill kind of thing. Again, you can do a short roll there. Now, that thing, you probably heard it in when I did it in the beginning. Heard a few different names for it. It's a Highland piping ornament, um, and I demonstrated a lot more fully in another video, which I will also link down below. Um, but the trick is, uh, so you're going from you're going from an A to a B, which is a great spot to use it, particularly in a slow tune like this where you got a little bit of time. That's the move, right? So you're on the A. That's effectively what you're doing if you were to slow it down. But it's one of those that kind of has to be quick. Otherwise, it sounds a little wonky. It just doesn't sound that great. It sounds a little pointlessly bubbly there. So at, at full tempo, and it just has kind of a cool, sort of a biting, kind of a crackly kind of sound that I think sounds kind of neat. And it's unique to that transition, the A to the B. You can do it other spots, I guess. It's just a lot harder. It's, it just fits naturally from that A to B. And then again, that, uh, that C sharp, C natural kind of move there. You can cram that D as you hit that, that note if you can do it quickly enough. Uh, so the basic melody again, right? Those are your three notes. You can go, and as you hit that D, you're going from an A to a D. As you hit that, you're gonna do two quick cuts. Or three, if you can get them in there. 
That's one I did a lot in the first time through. So we can still do that little bubbly thing on the B again. And as you land on the A coming back down, you're popping that B finger up. Sort of the same kind of move, but in reverse. And as you hit, it's just... It's just kind of a cool accent in a bit of an unusual beat, which is why I like doing it. And that's one I've done a bunch. It's basically just two quick cuts from the E to the D. I use the ring finger and then the index finger here. Sort of um, two thirds of a crayon basically on an E because you could do for a crayon. You're just doing two thirds of that, the first two of those notes. And then I would just, if I'm doing that, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't do the extra uh, grace note there, the extra cut that I demonstrated the first time through. Um, to my ear, it's just a bit too much, so I'd probably just tongue those last, last two notes. So, B part, again, still in the lower octave for the most part, but we do hit that high D. Now, uh, again, you can cram that, like I did the first time through in the A part. That slide that I do on the F sharp, I, I kind of tend to do that any chance I get, because that's one of those unique physics kind of things that's that's kind of special to the whistle. The main melody, you're going from a D to a C sharp. But if instead of going straight to the C sharp, you just kind of slide off that B first. And then you can do that cool little bubbly thing on the B. Or a half short roll. That's another option to, to make things a little bit easier. And again, they're sliding off that B to the to the C sharp the second time. Again, I use it as much as I can. And I do the same thing coming down the scale. Maybe that's a bit much, but I like kind of the, the symmetry of it. Where you can kind of hit those couple notes in a row and reuse that same effect. It, it kind of makes it a little bit more pronounced, I think. Your next phrase drops down to the F sharp, and you can do the same thing there if you're so inclined. Don't have to, but could just cut that. And again, rolling off that B to make that kind of C sharp, C natural-ish kind of sound. Slide into that A. I use a lot of slides in this. The slower tunes, I tend to use a lot more slides. Just works pretty well here, I think. And again, that kind of double, double grace note, two thirds cran, whatever we're gonna call that. Same thing on the upper octave in this case. That's how we finish the, the A part. You can finish the B part the same way. If you do it nice and quick like that, it always reminds me of a bird singing. I hope that's not too cheesy. It's again, it's one of those things that's just so unique to the whistle. And again, that all that is is just two grace notes, sliding up to the E first. Ring finger, index finger. And then back down. Which again is the same as the A part. I hope you guys like this tune, and I hope you'll forgive me for redoing a video that I already posted a thousand years ago, but given the advent of modern technology and lighting and microphones and all that, and uh, hopefully just a little bit better video editing, I figured it's about time to, to take a look at this one because I do teach it so much and it's a great beginner tune. It's a good one to start with if you're looking for a proper Irish tune. You know, maybe you got a whistle and you've been playing stuff you heard out of movies or you've been playing folk songs. Nothing wrong with that, but if you do decide you want to delve into some Irish music, it's a great tune to start with. The last thing I'm going to say about this is I also posted a link down at the bottom to a friend of mine, Tony DeMarco, who's a fiddle player, who played this at a session in New York once and my head exploded. And fortunately, he was cool enough to record it on his last album. And do yourself a favor and listen to it. He does things that um, would never have occurred to me. And he plays them very brilliantly. All right, guys. See you all in the next one. Cheers.